Funding for FAIR 2018 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. The Gilchrist Foundation, founded by Jocelyn Gilchrist, furthering the philanthropic interests of the Gilchrist family in wildlife and conservation, the arts and public broadcasting, and disaster relief. The Iowa Lottery, since 1985, proceeds totaling more than $1.7 billion have helped make Iowa a better place to live, work, and raise a family. More information is available at IALottery.com. At EMC, our business is taking care of your business, and it has been for more than a century. We provide property, auto, and life coverage for nearly 500 types of businesses in communities across the country. Count on EMC. Hi, I'm Bill Riley, and I'm standing smack dab in the middle of one of my favorite spots in the whole wide world, the Iowa State Fair. You know, Iowa Public Television is speeding towards our fifth decade producing State Fair highlight shows, just like this one. And it's all because of you and that special bond that we share. It's simple. We love the fair. You love the fair. So we work hard on bringing you in-depth coverage every year. Let me tell you what we have in store for you tonight. We'll see the famous State Fair ice sculptor blast his chainsaw through an unassuming block of ice. Delaney Howell showcases the action in the 4-H swine show. And farmers and diners get to know each other at the farm to fair meal. Thanks for joining us tonight. Let's get the celebration started. An auctioneer's chant is effective yet strangely hypnotic. Let's all get lulled into the action at the auctioneer's contest. We have got the 2018 Iowa Auctioneers Finals and Champions. We've got 20 of the greatest contestants in Iowa and the surrounding states competing for the title of Grand Champion today. Auctioneer contest today, let's give them one last round of applause here. This is our 53rd year of having the Bid Calling Championship. There is a history, there's a history to this contest here at the Iowa State Fair. It's a really fun time to compete with competitors and friends among the Iowa Auctioneers Association members. Well, we're getting a layout of what we're going to be selling. Uh, we can work on our descriptions, help us out, and be more, a little more comfortable when we go to sell the items. It's a good time to practice and hone your skills and just learn. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing here at the Iowa State Fair this morning? I like to hear them auctioneers. But I can still, sit and listen to them all day. They, they just, there's something about it. It's just a good auctioneer is hard to beat. I love auctions, seriously. I'm not sure what I'm going to bid on, but I will bid on something because it's so fun. How's that sound for you carried around the Iowa State Fair? All right, here we go. What are you going to do? Carried on, have a daughter here. Get 20. It's, it's the, the rhythm of it. It's the, it draws you in. It's, it's like singing a song, and it's that rhythm, it's that chant. $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $
how well they control the crowd, uh, and if they say sold. We want to make sure that the bidding numbers are clear, their chant is clear, and that the, the person buying the item knows exactly what they bought and what they paid for it. Sold, 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 sold it, sold your way. Sold it, name it's way, $35, and it goes on buyer. 268 of the buyer, 268. Oh, it's just fun, you know, to get to see 20 some auctioneers, you know, sell, and everybody has different styles. And uh, it's just, uh, it, it kind of gets in your blood. I do think that we've got one of the best contests uh, in the auctioneering community today. It's a, it's a great contest because it, it gets to showcase what we get to do, and it makes you a better person. And that's a, that kind of sets it apart from just doing a regular auction. Hard work and dedication pay off for the students in the 4-H Swine Show. Delaney Howell is there. Just under half of the top 100 pork producing counties happened to be located in Iowa, bringing in billions of dollars in value. These 4-H exhibitors at the 2018 Market Hog Show represent the creme de la crop of Iowa's hog industry. Let's take a look at some of the exhibitors from today's competition. Coming into the ring, these exhibitors are making eye contact with the judge right away. The judge is looking at the hogs as the exhibitors are pulling them out of the pens, seeing which ones he will pull to the top of the class. Just an overall balance of traits more than anything. Uh, just hogs that uh, you know look like they're balanced from the side. They're as tall at their shoulder as they are at their hip. Um, you know, they got a good shape down their top and, and an attractive look at their front end and, and just sound on their feet and legs and really square on their feet and legs. These exhibitors are constantly thinking about showmanship because there is a showmanship component of the 4-H Market Hog Show. A good showman can take a, can hide a, a hole in a hog every once in a while, if, if, especially if you don't get go get the angle that you're wanting. Uh, I've seen that happen numerous times over the course of my career. But that's, you know, those kids work hard at it. As the last hog gets pulled out of the pen, the judge is now going to look at the class as a whole, pulling those he sees as top hogs to the front of the class. Those hogs that don't quite cut it for him will be penned as he takes a look at the top ones and will place a champion at the end of the class. The champion and reserve champion overall market hog will go into the sale of champions on Saturday. Um, and there's quite a bit of, of course, money there. And then if they have purebred hogs, a lot of the breeders who raise purebred hogs will support um, some small prize money to associate with that as well. It certainly is an art keeping the hog between the judge and yourself because as the judge is moving around the ring, he's looking through those pigs, sorting through those pigs, trying to find the ones he wants to bring to the top of the class. Today's judge is pulling the top three for the final drive and he looks like he just pinned the fourth one here. He'll go ahead now and do one final look over here at the top three hogs and start to make his decision about grand champion and reserve champion for this class. You're definitely trying to make your hog look the best it can and the best people outside the ring because they don't know all the aspects of showing. So especially like with the whip, you don't want to be over whipping. You don't want to get frustrated with your hog because that can happen, especially when they know the outgate and they've been in the ring before. You can definitely tell that people who have worked with their pigs more and people who have worked with them less. But a lot of the people here at the Iowa State Fair, they really care about their pigs. As you can tell, a lot of them are trained, you know, and they've worked really hard to get to where they're at today. You're in the ring here at the Iowa State Fair. Tell me about some of the duties that you have specifically at the State Fair. So this year at the State Fair, I get to be here in the ring and pass out the ribbons to all the exhibitors. I grew up showing 4-H hogs in Story County, and then I've just gone on to Iowa State where I'm studying animal science and my emphasis is swine. Looks like the judge has narrowed it down to a top two now. And from this class, he'll pick a first and second place and give some final comments to the exhibitors. In this class, I think we get it to this pair becomes fairly evident which one's just got more punch. I mean, which one's got more power up high, which one's better at the top side of his blade, which one's got more turn and shake down his back and throughout his hip. That's this young man right here. This class. Let's take a look at some of the results from today's competition.
The Cultural Center has a wonderful way in which Iowans living with disabilities can showcase their artwork. Tucked away on the first floor of the Cultural Center is Art Access. This is a place where Iowans living with disabilities have the opportunity to display their ability to create amazing art. All right, John, tell me about Art Access as a show at the Cultural Center. Well, Art Access is not a jury show, okay? So it's open to any person in Iowa who lives and creates with a disability. They could uh, sign up, bring your art in, and it would be hung. Anything you create with, I mean, Right down here we have uh, somebody who took a, a block of wood and bottle caps and wrote the word Jeep and spray painted and created this kind of craft and we hung it because that was their art. That's the whole fun of this because it's not about a disability, it's about their creativity. Why is art access separate? Why not just submit a painting or a charcoal drawing or a whatever art it is happens to be into the general show. Well, I think we have more people with disabilities doing that, but at one time, um, if you were dis had a disability, society looked at you different and just didn't accept you. And we really wanted to have a place at the Iowa State Fair where people weren't recognized for disability, but for their ability. We have an ADHD. If you would give me a piece of paper, it was blank. My mom figured out by looking at Norman Rockwell that if you put a circle in the middle of a picture, I could create. I would interact with that. So my beginning artwork had circles. And so it was that type of encouragement. I went from an, a young child who struggled with it to a grown man now that I do portrait work. If you are struggling and you can bring a piece to the Iowa State Fair and people see it, that's the encouragement. And I think a show like this over the years has given artists with a disability that type of push in their lives to step out and try the shows upstairs and enter other things. So as long as we give and keep giving opportunities, then people will take those. If you're a lifelong fair attendee, you may remember some of these landmarks at the fairgrounds. Dean Borg takes us away in another fair flashback. The Iowa State Fair is always changing, but there are some things that have disappeared over the years. And although the fair is a lot of tradition and I want to see this again, Things change at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. Sean, you've got an exhibit here of things that we recall, but they're no longer on the grounds. And this is an older picture here. What do you see here in this photo that uh, is of significance? Well, the big draw here is the exposition building, um, which was built for the original fair when it moved here in 1886. Um, and it lasted up through 1950, um, and then it was just some rotting and damage, then they tore that one down. But it's still called Expo Hill because that building was there. And a roller coaster. Yeah. We don't have one of those now. We have a, a sky, sky glider. Sky yeah. yeah. Um, the roller coaster, yeah, it was built in the early turn of the century, 1908. Um, and that was popular, as you know, in the Rodgers and Hammerstein movie. There's a, you know, the, she's riding on the roller coaster. Yes. And it, it eventually rotted and got to a point where it had to be taken down when we didn't have control of the fair during the war years. But a lot of the wood was salvaged and went into homes on the east side. So the wood is still around. It's yeah. Homes on the east side of the yep. wood. They're, okay. they're living fair history and they don't even know it. <laughs> and, and Teen Town. I remember Teen Town and I, I really hadn't missed it. Yeah, it was 1964, so it was catered towards the baby boomer generation. And 
Um, it was really everything that would cater to them. They had a battle of the bands for rock and roll. Um, they had booths that showed, you know, senior pictures and the hot new cars, and they would do fashion shows around a pool they had in the, the front, and it was really interesting. Located right in front of the grandstand, wasn't it, on the midway yeah, there? Yeah, it was just back um, back set. It's kind of the area behind the Riley stage now. Uh-huh, on the uh, Grand Avenue area there. Yeah, yeah just so. off of there. What was the idea, do you think, of, of, of having something specifically for teens? Well, that generation was so big that they said, you know, we should be you know cashing in on this, so let's mm -hmm. make them their own area so they have an area to go and meet with their friends and cater to them. How what would you speculate? What's changed? Why hasn't Teen Town around? Well, I think it's spread out. Now you have stuff for teens and all, all over the fair. I see. And instead of just in one, in one area. Good idea. Women and Children's Building, we have women and children's emphasis at the fair, but not just a building now. Yeah, and back then that was a, a really great building. It's unfortunate that we weren't able to save that. But the baby health contest was held in there. Um, and lots of other things. There would be cooking demonstrations and a lot of different contests that catered to women and children. But now, just like Teen Town, it's spread throughout the fair. Emphasis right. on all genders. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the uh, emphasis here on totem pole and t Indian teepees, was that just a f theme for a year or what? Yeah, that went along with the theme fairs we had for those years. Um, it's the Indian village, and then it transformed, and they added the block fort and, and different things. And at one point, it was a Vietnam village during the Vietnam War to try to show what the people were dealing with there. Well, so one thing we ought to say to our viewers, come to the fair today, because you don't know how it's going to change, and it'll probably be gone tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you. Set a table on the Grand Concourse and they will come to enjoy a farm to fair meal, all while mingling with local food producers. This is one of the new events at the fair this year the largest dinner table ever set on the fairgrounds. 500 consumers, farmers, producers sitting down to share dinner and conversation about agriculture. That's something that's been at the heart of the Iowa State Fair since its beginning. I just strolled by and uh, I said, oh, what's this? And they said, oh yeah, we're having lunch and you can chat with a farmer. I'm like, oh, that sounds great, I'll do that. <laughs> so here I am. Today, more and more people want to understand where their food comes from. Um, they want to see the faces behind who raises that food and um, why it's important that they understand that so that when they are going into the grocery stores and making their decisions, um, they, can, they can remember those people that they meet and know that they raised that wonderful food that I'm about to purchase and eat. The producers here represent just about every commodity group in the state, from pork, beef, turkey and eggs, to corn, soybeans and dairy. And all of those products are included in the menu of appetizers, side dishes and the main course. Well, what are you learning so far? Uh, about how the, the plate of the farmers are having a hard time and that um, the, all of the corn-fed beef here and the taste of it and stuff. And we're gonna, I guess we're going to be able to try a sample of it here pretty soon, which is I'm looking forward to. You come to the fair for fun, and you end up with a nice meal and learn a few things. Sure did. Oh, I'm going to learn a lot more, too, I'm sure, before this is over. <laughs> I'm a happy camper. We get to give consumers a face to agriculture in Iowa and tell them all the positive things and how we are taking care of the land and our animals and our crops in this state. Um, a lot of us, like myself, are active on social media, so we can direct them to our sites. Um, give them more information or, you know, direct them to other producers around the state if they want to learn about other types of agriculture that we individually don't raise. So you've eaten a pretty good meal here. Yeah. Um, what have you learned today? Uh, I've learned a lot about, um, the, from speaking with David here, I've learned a lot about uh, what's important to look for. Like in the industry, he talk, also talked a lot a bit about the different uh, policies that are associated with agriculture. And I think that that's really important for us to think about those, what's really good for farmers, what's really good for the consumer. And I think that's, you know, I've learned a lot of uh, things that I can use and uh, hopefully make me a bit more informed consumer. I thought it was great. Um, it was really exciting to get to talk with consumers because um, I'm always interested in what they think of the job that we do as beef producers. And 
I really wanted to ask them what their concerns or questions were with the job that I'm doing and all the producers are doing. Some people might come here to see farmers. Some farmers come here because we want to see how the general populace thinks of us. And the job that we do, you know, it's the whole reason that the fair kind of started is, so it's really fun that those roots of the fair have drawn this size of a crowd and we can have a great event like this. Kids love to talk to IPTV's Dan Wardell, and most of the time they have some amazingly smart insights into things going on around the fair. It's bigger than the slide at your school. It's bigger than the slide at your playground. Behold, the giant slide! We're looking here at this amazing piece of equipment. I think it's called the little slide, right? No, it's called the big slide. That's called the big slide? Yeah. I always thought that was the little slide, but... What's it feel like when you go down that big slide? I'm trying to decide whether I want to go down it or not. Bumpy, weavy. Bumpy and weavy? Yeah. All on one ride? Yeah. Wow, did you have fun? Yeah. So my friend Caleb is about to go down the giant slide. What is going through your mind? Um, I'm scared. I know how you feel. That's pretty high, isn't it? I feel like I need a seat belt, but do we need seat belts? Mm -mm. You just get on that little burlap sack and down you go. Mm -hmm. At any moment, were you terrified out of your mind? Uh, I was terrified of all the steps. Oh, yeah, that's the toughest part. So tell me, Nora, when you get up to the top of that big slide, what goes through your mind? Hmm. It's so fast! It's so fast? Like, how fast would you say it is? It's like faster than a tiger chasing a cheetah around a car. <laughs> so you're up there at the top looking down. What's going through your head then? Um, I'm ready. You <laughs> Were you ready? Yeah. But aren't you always ready? Yeah. So how many steps do you think it takes to get to the very top? I don't know. Like a hundred million? A hundred million steps? Are you sure about that? Yeah. No. Did you think the big slide was really fun? Really, really fun or really, really, really fun? Really, really, really fun. That's three reallys. What advice would you give anybody who is thinking about going on the big slide? Have fun. Have fun, are you sure about that? Yeah. Do you think you're gonna have fun? Yeah. Do you think I'm gonna have fun? Do you think we're gonna have fun? Should we have some fun? It's a heartwarming event when we get to stop and admire our heroes as they parade down the Grand Concourse. Well, this year what we're focused on is really trying to tell the story about the U.S. involvement at the end of World War I. Three, two, hop! Carrying the garrison flag on behalf of the Iowa Department of Veterans Affairs is Athene's Military Veterans Organization and the Ready Reserve. Let's welcome the Iowa National Guard, 34th Army Band, commanded by Chief Warrant Officer 3, Kent Wesley, and led by Drum Major, First Sergeant Brian Papadoukas. <laughs> Soldiers of the 103rd Expeditionary Sustainment Command, United States Army Reserve, Fort Des Moines, led by Major Randall Sumbles. Yo lamp, yo lamp, yo lamp, go! We've worked on trying to change the direction and the flow of traffic to try to make it a little bit better for both fair goers and those watching the parade, but obviously our veterans and our military personnel who are marching in the parade. 100 years ago, the U.S. was fighting in the Great War, later known as World War I. The first of our three Grand Marshal entries recognizes the end of the Great War. An M38 Willis Jeep, maintained by the Iowa Gold Star Military Museum at Camp Dodge, is our next Grand Marshal entry. Visit the museum's award-winning World War I exhibit to learn more about Iowa's involvement in the Great War. Our second Grand Marshal, 
Entry is a replica World War I Model T utility truck used to haul ammo to the front. Owner Randall Rogers and driver Ron Crow are in the front, and Tom Clegg is in black portraying General John Pershing, commander of American forces during the Great War. Our third and final Grand Marshal entry is a present-day military vehicle from the 1st Battalion, 168th Infantry Regiment, Iowa Army National Guard. The 1st 16A traces its military lineage and honors back to World War I, where it was the only Iowa National Guard to, unit to participate intact in the hostilities in France as part of the 42nd Rainbow Division. You had to get the people to recognize what, what they did and, and where they served. Uh, a lot of people, they just take it for granted they was in the service, and uh, but it, it gets people aware of what's going on in the world. Even now, with the uh, soldiers over, overseas now, it's uh, very important to keep the people informed. And today is really about honoring our veterans. I mean, that's what we're so uh, appreciative for the Iowa State Fair for having a day set aside to show military appreciation and to recognize the service and sacrifice of our military veterans. Participating in a contest at the fair is an ageless and inspiring undertaking. Here are the results from some of the contests you may have entered at the remarkable Iowa State Fair. Hey, we're going to take a quick break as we've reached the midpoint of our highlight show. When we come back, we're going to hit the ground running with stories like these. The creative and loud ice carver. The suspenseful egg rolling contest. And an interview with the Nadas as they celebrate their 25th anniversary. We'll meet you right back here for more Iowa Public Television State Fair fun. There's so much to see at the fair, it's almost overwhelming. Iowa Public Television's Fair Highlights Show is your guide to the best the fair has to offer. The food, the entertainment, and the memories. Your financial support helps us bring these stories to you. Call 800-779-7000 or visit IPTV.org and become a member today. Iowa Public Television is bringing you more ways to get involved in our Iowa State Fair coverage. Find us on Twitter and Facebook for live fair coverage and exclusive features. Follow us on Instagram and Snapchat for behind the scenes tidbits. And visit IPTV.org fair to watch videos and connect with all IPTV has to offer. Join us online for State Fair fun. This month in Passport, your on-demand library of the best of PBS. If Everest is to be climbed, it already needs to be there. Oh, oh, the pangolin is critically endangered. More valuable than ivory. Still my guitar, Jerry. These and other shows are available with Passport. Become a member of this PBS station. Sign in and start streaming today. Be a part of IPTV's State Fair coverage this year by sharing your favorite pictures with us. Just tag your photos on social media with hashtag IPTVFairPhoto. We'll include our favorites on IPTV.org slash fair.
See more of your favorite IPTV programs on YouTube. Follow IO Ingredient on Facebook. Connect with all our social networks by visiting IPTV.org slash social. Hi, I'm Bill Riley. One of the most entertaining traditions at the Iowa State Fair is the Talent Championships. Iowa Public Television will be there again this year to cover the magic, excitement, and impressive talents of young Iowans from across our state. Tune in Sunday night at 8 p.m. for the Bill Riley Talent Championships, only on Iowa Public Television. Coming up on Market to Market, the Midwest gains a handful of pork processing plants. Look like there's and Don Rose joins me to give his insight to, uh, on trends on in the commodity markets. Negative. Market to Market, the weekly journal of rural America. Friday at 8, Sunday at 12.30. Visit Iowa Public Television at the Iowa State Fair to pick up your IPTV passport. Watch all your favorite programs whenever, wherever you want. Stop by to say hello to Kids Clubhouse Adventure hosts Dan Wardell and Abby Brown. Take your picture with Clifford the Big Red Dog. And be sure to enter our grand prize drawing, pick up a copy of the August Advance, and vote for your favorite passport program personality. You'll find us in the Varied Industries building. We'll see you at the fair. We saw some terrific performers at the talent competition today. Here are the acts that advanced. gearing up to be a very entertaining talent championship show. So join us Sunday in primetime here on Iowa Public Television to see who wins it all. Hi folks and welcome back. I'm Bill Riley. You know, state fair time is family time, a tradition among so many Iowans. So we're glad you've gathered around the TV to watch. Or possibly you're doing a little multitasking, watching on your smartphone or your laptop. Hey, any way you're watching us, we're glad you've joined us. Now, we're gonna get things revved up or maybe chill out a little bit with the ice carver. They don't see it every day, especially not in 90 degree weather, someone outside carving ice. I try to work fast, but I can hopefully give somebody a shot of snow in the side of their face, cool them off for a little bit. The Iowa State Fair started out as a contest. About the third year of competition, I just mentioned to them that, hey, you know, I can, I can do exhibitions if you want. And they said, sure, let's do it. 28 years running now, here we are. Hi, my name is Bill Gordish, and I'm the Iowa State Fair ice sculptor. So I ordered a new apron a couple weeks ago, but the people quit carrying them, so they had to ship from Japan. I was hoping they have a pretty blue one. This one's, this one's about four years old. It's just ice, and uh, it can break just as quick as we... So we don't want to say that word, though. So. The block of ice is a 300 pound rectangle. It's 40 inches tall, 20 inches wide, and 10 inches thick. We pull them out around two o'clock so that they're tempered. How much is that? 100 bucks. Because if they're not tempered and you pull a block of ice out of the freezer to 80 degrees, it'll just shatter. All right, this one's a risky one, but we're gonna do it anyway. So everything that you see carved 
comes from that 300 pound rectangle. There's no air impurities in it, so if you're doing something for someone's wedding, it's a beautiful crystal clear block of ice. So the more cuts you make in it with detail and angles, acts as kind of the, the facets of a diamond cut. So when the light hits it, you'll see the reflection of it, which kind of makes them shimmer and shine. You want to work fast, and you want to get it done while people aren't just like tapping their foot and want to leave. They want to see the finished product too. I, I try to shake it up from year to year. Something that's exciting and different to keep the crowd interested. It's okay. All right, guys, let's, let's stock that piggy bank. Get in there. <laughs> this is just kind of a, a side hustle that I've done for years. So if people need an ice carving, they call me. Heading up the food department with hundreds and hundreds of categories, oh, it's a mind-boggling task. But Karen McKilligan likes the challenge. It's always very exciting to me to see the tables full of exhibits. I think, uh, and, and the exhibitors that come back from year to year, it's like uh, having a family reunion or a class reunion or something, and you see people again and see them bringing in their beautiful entries. It's a lot of fun. It's just very, very inspiring. I volunteered in the food department beginning in 2010, and I just kind of worked into the food superintendent role. I did a number of uh, different jobs the same as every other worker that comes into our department. Um, and I, I think um, my enthusiasm probably showed through um, and dedication to it. And just a couple years ago, Arlette just asked me if I would be interested in learning what she did because she wasn't gonna be able to do this forever and somebody else needed to know. And so it just kind of evolved. Oh, she left a tremendous legacy and there's a lot of pressure to, to carry forward with the excellence that Arlette did. She was so passionate about the, her role as food superintendent and, and that department and dedicated so much of herself to, to making it what it has become. During the fair, just making sure that everything runs smoothly is the job of the superintendent and uh, helping direct uh, or supervise the activities that go on there. We typically start the day in the food department around 7.30 in the morning. The exhibits begin coming in at eight o'clock and it, it starts off kind of uh, normal and just kind of at an even keel and then Progressively, the activity increases during the day. And when all four judging rooms get going and there's contests going on all during the day and judges showing up and coming and going, it, um, it, it becomes quite a buzz of activity. The people and the food, I love, um, I love seeing the creativity. I love the, um, the expression that the food department provides of Iowa culture. To me, food is a very important part of culture and gives people an opportunity to express themselves, to be innovative, to, um, to just enjoy variety. And I love seeing the entries that people bring in, whether they're traditional dishes like a cherry lattice top cherry pie that's just beautiful or something brand new like sweet corn ice cream. 
that people might bring in. And so um, that, that's the best part of my job. It's just the best example of what we are about in Iowa and all the things that represent Iowa. And I, you know, whether it's music, whether it's food in our department or um, the food with the uh, new foods contest that the Iowa State Fair has, or whether it's the livestock or industry, it's just, it's just a great showcase of Iowa culture and I love that. The Nottas are celebrating their 25th anniversary in style this year at the fairgrounds and in front of their longtime fans. We came down to the Iowa State Fair today because we love the fair, but especially to see the Nottas tonight. I'm super excited to see the Nottas again because I've been a lifelong fan. I'm almost 19. The Nottas is the best show ever. Thank you very much. I'm Mike. I'm Jason. We're the Nottas. We began 25 years ago. We started in the fall of 93. We started out as Mike and Jason, or Jason and Mike. It was a, already an internal struggle. It just depended on who made the, the poster for the show. Right. And then we uh, kind of picked up some other players and needed to name the band. We were in the basement of rehearsing, and um, we were struggling to find a name that meant something, and so we went with a name that meant nothing. We have been performing at the fair for so many years, I don't know how many years, and I don't know that anyone really kept track, but most of our career we've been playing here. But what's special about it, it's sort of hard to explain. And, and I, what I've learned being in this band is if you really try to like figure out the magic, you might kind of ruin it. So we just let this show be magic, but I will tell you that it always is. There's another one off the new record. One Louder is our 11th studio record, which it's kind of a little nod, a reference to the movie Spinal Tap where the amps go to 11. We try to give back as much as we can. Um, I, I do think the biggest way is with our Not A Silent Night that we do every year that uh, benefits Toys for Tots. Man, over the years, we're well over 10,000 toys donated. Hey, Henry James, I'm so glad that you came. You're my very best friend and an inspiration. I'll try my this uh, year with this record, we had the opportunity to help something that was really close to Mike. So we have a song on the new record called Henry James, which is about Mike's son, who is autistic. And we kind of used that opportunity to um, help raise awareness and some money for autism this year. So that was a, a new but big, important thing for us. Yeah, we made a video for the song, and it went mini viral for us, like a quarter of a million views on Facebook, which was really cool, and then our fans came together and donated quite a bit of money that we were able to give to local charities around here. Hey, Henry James got me going insane as I patiently wait for that beautiful brain to crack open and you to fall out like We are being inducted into the Iowa Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the only group so far that has that's getting inducted the first year of their eligibility. So this is our first year of eligibility at, at 25 years. And so I, it, was, it was a little surprising to get that call, but like, what an honor. I couldn't hear the rush for everybody screaming. Well, our fans have given us a career. I mean, we would be playing music probably regardless of whether there were people buying tickets and CDs and t-shirts, but, but they've allowed us to kind of do this at, in a serious way, um, a legitimate way for 25 years. That's, that's pretty amazing. Staying fit doesn't have to be boring, especially at the fairgrounds, where folks are gathered for fitness on the hill with drumsticks. 
Pound is something new that we're doing this year. It's kind of a new physical activity. It's a fun activity. You don't have to be a drum professional to do it by any means. When I did Pound, you know, I wasn't sure what to expect, um, to be honest, and it actually was a full body workout. I remember the day afterwards, I was like, wow, I feel it in my legs, I can feel it in my core, I can feel it in my arms. Well, the Healthiest State Initiative, we're a nonprofit organization working to make Iowa the healthiest state in the nation. This is our fifth year hosting Fitness on the Hill. It's a great opportunity to get Iowans out to get some physical activity before they indulge in some Iowa State Fair food. Fitness on the Hill is held every single day of the Iowa State Fair from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, and it's held on the Expo Hill. And really, the opportunity is to try new uh, physical activities, so, you know, everything from yoga to Zumba to pound. Oh, yeah, nice. We know that fairgoers come from all 99 counties, so we want to make sure that we're giving opportunities to instructors from across the state of Iowa to join us and help educate Iowans about new activities they can do and take back to their hometown as well. I normally do about a half hour class in Pleasantville. Some of them run 45 minutes to an hour. It can be modified just in general. I know that there are instructors that will go to nursing homes and, and do it so that they can pound on the sides of their wheelchairs. So it's very modifiable to meet any needs wherever you're at in whatever population you're doing it for. You don't need anything special to participate. I provide all the drumsticks for my location. Some locations, they will specify that you need to buy your own drumsticks. I'm here because I am an FFA usher. We usher down at the grandstands every night and we help out around the fair. So we live at the fairgrounds and I've been here at Fitness on the Hill. This is my second time coming here to pound the sticks and it's really fun. You're following the instructor along and she tells you kind of the intensity of the songs. So they go from one to three and once you get to that level three, you're really just, you're going, but she's warmed you up enough that it's great and I really love it. Uh, really gets a sweat going in the morning. You get going and you kind of listen to music, enjoying yourself, and you just forget how much your quads burn and how much your glutes are burning you, you know? The biggest benefit with Pound or any exercise, I think, is the community aspect of it. And obviously, the physical, there's the toning of the legs and glutes, and there's some cardio aspects in it as well. It's just fun to be in the group and getting into it and going big and showing people, hey, you can do this. You know, this is not the Olympics. I mean, you can do this. Anyone can, any age. I actually go to Tammy's workout class back at home. And I also camp here. My grandma's camped in the same spot for 48 years, so I've camped there since I was born. State Fair is a magical place. I mean, this is the greatest fair in the world, so just getting to work out and then go down and eat the fair food is even better. Deep down, we're all alike. We love the Iowa State Fair and cherish our fair time traditions. Charity Nebby met some more fair fans. Thank you, Bill. I am now here with Nancy and Dan Heeman, and they've been coming to the fair, what, since the 1980s for yeah, you, right? About 40 years, so, 40 years. yeah. And you guys have shown a lot of animals, and not just you, but your entire family, right? Mm -hmm. Our children, grandchildren. They're all now showing, and we have assortments of different animals. We're primarily swine and sheep, but it's been, we've had goats, chickens, um, geese, just about everything. Whatever the children decided was their favorite at the time. So we just promote what they wanted to do. And this is not a, uh, a small investment. I mean, if you decide to show an animal at the fair, how long do you spend getting ready? Oh, months and months, sometimes years of preparation to get everything ready. And then you get all the animals ready and then you start packing kits and you start packing food, you start packing livestock trailers. And so we usually, like we would separate and conquer. He would take the older three children and, and with the livestock trailers and animals and I would take the younger three kids with all the food and uh, everything else and we would meet up and it's a family affair. Wow. Now, when you're showing the animals, have you guys I, I know some people sleep in the barns. Have you actually spent nights in those barns? No, we haven't, but taking a lot of naps. Naps there, you know. Hot days like this, it kind of wears you out, you know. So 
but no, we haven't slept in the bar. My oldest son has his camper right across the street, so we kind of hang out there and get cooled down. So it's we've come a long ways from the 80s, uh, just running back and forth, and so it's it's just a good time for everybody in the family. So, what makes this special for you? What keeps you coming back? Um, I think it's just um, the love of agriculture in Iowa. Um, watching the kids mature. I think that it's it's a joy. Yeah, I'm sure that's very, very special. Well, thank you both so much for talking with me. Thank you. Thank you. It's one of the most delicate competitions at the fair. Contestants must have just the right touch. We get to give you each one, and you roll it down the hill, try and get it as far down the hill as possible without breaking it. And then the furthest you get, the furthest person gets to then um, win a trophy or a ribbon, and we go on until we get a winner. So it's pretty exciting. Don't break them. There's not really one specific way that works better. Try not to be too hard, but want to make sure you get it all the way down. This is my second year um, taking over from our grandparents of doing it for about 50, about 50 years now. I just come here, it says it's egg rolling time, and so here I am. I don't give very far, but I have fun. Oh, it's not easy. You come to all these bumps and humps and nuts under there, or whatever it is, you know. <laughs> and uh, some of them are so wonderful, they just go, even the little children, go clear to the bottom. I'm always a end up a participant <laughs> but I do it anyway there's always a chance eggs do splatter and there is a chance that you could get some egg on you <laughs> just so you're aware Lillian Donaldson you're up first okay, okay, walk they do. Okay. Getting low and doing it fast. Well, my wife won this last year, and I had to compete, so I came out and tried to win, and, and uh, I was able to get lucky enough to get down the hill four or five times. She's only done it once, and she retired after her win last year. <laughs> So I'm going back to the camper with this trophy to put right beside hers in the campground. We certainly hope you've had the opportunity to visit the fairgrounds yourselves. But if not, here's another moment to feel as if you were there at the fair.
the Iowa State Fair, there's always something interesting to observe or be part of. But if that one moment just wasn't enough for you, head to our website to enjoy more fair time content anywhere, anytime. You can enjoy full episodes or an entire library of past fair stories. And throughout the fair, find us on social media. IPTV's Paul Yeager is part of the social media team this year, and we're all on a mission to bring you as much of the state fair as we can. Hey, we'd love to see you back here tomorrow for another round of fantastic fair highlights. Rubber chickens beware. There are some ladies with some seriously good throwing arms. We'll check out that action. The 4-H Grand Champion Steer will be in the Livestock Pavilion, and the fleet footwork of Irish dancers impresses IPTV's Abby Brown, plus a whole lot more. If you value our in-depth fair coverage, show your support by investing. Go to IPTVFriends.org slash donate. Every dollar matters, and it allows us to keep our state fair coverage robust. We value our relationship with all of you. Thank you. Until next time, I'm Bill Riley, signing off for now, but reminding you to have fun at the fair. Funding for FAIR 2018 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. The Gilchrist Foundation, founded by Jocelyn Gilchrist, furthering the philanthropic interests of the Gilchrist family in wildlife and conservation, the arts and public broadcasting, and disaster relief. The Iowa Lottery. Each year, lottery proceeds provide millions of dollars to finance state programs that benefit all Iowans. The Iowa Lottery putting the woo-hoo into state funding since 1985. At EMC, our business is taking care of your business, and it has been for more than a century. We provide property, auto, and life coverage for nearly 500 types of businesses in communities across the country. Count on EMC.